Well, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm so sorry again, for students, dear students. I'm sorry, uh, but I can't help it. Well, um, cirrhosis, uh, so the, by definition, and what the cause is cirrhosis. So definition is very simple. Obviously, what happens is inflammatory process, repair, inflammatory process, repair. So if uh, both the process simultaneously, they keep on going and uh, they're moving towards the chronicity, what happens is by definition, you can call it that the patient is going towards cirrhosis. In fact, liver tries to repair by itself, but this, um, if the causative uh, organism or uh, the cause behind uh, the inflammatory process, if it remains there, what uh, liver can do it. Liver can try to repair itself and uh, on the other hand, the cause uh, leading to inflammation is uh, persisting. So both the process, the process of inflammation, the process of repair uh, side by side when they move, finally it go, goes towards chronicity and cirrhosis or you can say fibrosis. So what causes, I have already enumerated and uh, we started in the lecture, the start of the lecture, we enumerated all these diseases which we have talked about till now, they can cause to cirrhosis. In fact, in pathogenesis, what happens is the basement membrane, uh, uh, collagen of the basement membrane, uh, collagen four and six is replaced by the collagen type one and type two, that, that is fibrillary collagen. And, and second step is there is capillarization and uh, this change in the extracellular ECM or extracellular matrix. The initiation of good growth process, activation and proliferation of angiogenesis and fibroblasts. So all this process, cytokines, they're released and they signal the, uh, the process to continue. And those cytokines are the, I will say, the scofer cell, um, cells, hepatocytes, and then uh, this uh, hemopoietic stem cells, these natural killer cells, lymphocytes, and dendritic cells, they are the cells which are responsible to release different types of cytokines, and those cytokines, they, they uh, key, uh, uh, keep the inflammation going on. So uh, clinically, the patient can have either the general constitutional symptoms like fatigue, lethargy, lethargy low fever, or chronic liver insufficiency, the patient may have serious bleeding, diathesis, or bleeding disorders, bleeding from the esophageal paresis, which we will uh, talk about a little later, hepatocellular, this pulmonary syndrome, portal hypertension. So, KCB surat may patient present kar sakta hai, or yaar, fair is aapka internet connection unstable ho gaya. We're talking about the clinical features and then the stages of different layer, inflammation, fibrosis, cirrhosis, and stage liver, and then it made the same pattern which we talked when in, this, in the initial lectures. So morphologically, what happens is in fibrosis, so nodularity uh, is the important feature. Uh, basically, in general, the liver is enlarged, obviously. It's firm and hard. One thing, fibrosis, hardness. So the firmness and hardness, enlargement of liver, but liver may be shrunken at the end of this. Uh, so fibrosis, yeah, uh, uh, in later stage, it, it, it becomes a shrunken. It may be reduced in size. So fibrosis, uh, depends on the etiology, which what is the cause, it, cause behind the fibrosis. So uh, viral or hepatitis B, C, hepatitis C is the most common cause. So we won't talk about that, um, uh, whatever is. The, the, you remember that the complication that the patient can develop, we, we talked just right uh, in previous slide that the patient may have general constitutional symptom persistent. The patient may develop portal hypertension. The patient may develop bleeding disorders that is through esophagus or the patient may complain of melina that is bleeding the rectum or uh, the sometimes the very very serious skin conditions patient may come to you with hepatic encephalopathy or hepatic encephalitis so ascites jo hai wo to aam taur pe bahut jaldi patient agar aa jaye to uski kismat hai so sometimes it's a blessing in disguise that the patient comes with ascites and the patient is diagnosed a little earlier and it can be managed, life can be prolonged and survival rate is a little more. 
Well, uh, we, this slide we have already talked about that if, if there's the patient is going into liver failure or end stage liver disease, uh, it's more so not the general constitutional symptoms or bleeding. It's rather the ascites loss of fluid leads to low levels of albumin in the circulation, leading to when the volume is low, renal blood flow is low, that simulates the REN angiotensin mechanism leading to uh, secondary aldosteronism. We talked about already this. Sodium levels are different. The patient has oliguria, serum creatinine is raised. Urea may be normal, it may be raised, or sometimes may be low as it is synthesized in the liver. There's accumulation of amino acid, and when ammonia is increased, it may um, cross the blood brain barrier and uh, lead to hepatic encephalopathy. In these patients, there's usually prolongation of prothrombin time, or PT, you call it. And as you know, that the uh, liver is involved in the glucose metabolism, so hypoglycemia may be safe. Seen in carcinomas, there are hardly the enzymes are either normal or raised. There may be cholestasis, or but the most hallmark is that the there is uh, uh, alpha beta protein is increased. So moving into on to next slides, the portal hypertension. What is hypertension? I'm sure if you remember the definition of hypertension from the knowledge of your physiology. Hypertension, um, I usually ask this question in the viva from the students, what is hypertension? Remember, hypo means more tension, means more tension in the blood vessel. So it could be because of increased blood flow or it could be because of increased resistance in the vessel. So vessel may have flow, resistance, but I pressure. So that is the reason, the same is over here, pressure in the portal vein is flow into resistance. In cases of primary hypertension, it is the cardiac output multiplied by the pressure in the vessels. So same is true for here, the formula is flow into resistance. So either the flow is more or the resistance is more. So this is very important. I'm not going into the detail. I don't have much time, but the end result is the esophageal varices. Portal hypertension ki physiology, you can read it from the books that what is the normal pressure in the portal veins and what is the normal pressure uh, in the systemic veins. But the question is, you can classify it. Some books, they classify it in pre-hepatic, hepatic and post-hepatic, but some books, they write pre-sinusoidal uh, portal hypertension, uh, serotic uh, portal hypertension or post-sinusoidal. So these are the same. You can say that it is pre-sinusoidal means uh, pre-hepatic. So either in this case, left function tests, they are normal. So, but it is, uh, uh, the cause is, not in the liver, but it is uh, uh, before the liver. So pre means before. So the kid, So that means either there is a thrombosis in the systemic vein or in the portal vein. So it is more so related with the thrombosis we talked about in the uh, last slide that this uh, pre-hepatic means thrombotic phenomena is leading to portal hypertension. So liver se pehle thrombosis ki wajah se hota. But in the cause in the liver is severe cirrhosis. And the cause behind the cirrhosis is all we have enumerated. One of the most common causes is hepatitis C virus. But uh, the other causes cannot be ignored. Post sinusoidal means post hypertension. So, bile duct ke upar jab kabhi pressure aaye, to uski wajah se pressure as the vessels, they are also pass, pa passing uh, closer to that. So, when there is a carcinoma of pancreas of head or there is a stone in the uh, bile duct, it can also put pressure uh, on the uh, this uh, venous uh, system, so leading to portal hypertension. See this portal hypertension. So it is what happens is, in fact, you can only say that there is an abnormal development of an abnormal connection between the portal vascular system and the systemic circulation brought from the abdominal organs usually is drained into portal vein, but what happens is instead of draining into portal vein, either there is a bypass uh, genetically uh, there or uh, because of fibrosis, the blood is diverted instead of going to the liver into the systemic circulation. So pressure is increased in the portal venous outside system. So then you call it post sinusoidal portal, portal hypertension. So it may be uh, congenital primary or it may be secondary because of fibrosis. The end result is uh, this portal venous uh, shunt. And uh, uh, here you can say that the end result is the pulmonary hypertension. So pulmonary hypertension develops in patients with liver disease or uh, usually.
clinically the patient may have bleeding disorder because of the esophageal varices ascites hepatic cephalopathy splenomegaly and when there is a splenomegaly it may cause anemia and low blood cell counts and low platelet count the complication is uh, liver failure sometimes the question usually is asked if a person has started esophageal varices that is bleeding so what happens is whether this bleeding will keep on increasing it will decrease or it can be managed so these are the questions usually asked from the patient uh, uh, to the doctor so naturally if the cause is removed the varices uh, it can be managed numbers it can uh, the bleeding can be made stable but if the cause is persistent for example if the patient is a, uh, a case of chronic alcoholism and has got the habit of Uh, uh using alcohol in large quantities and that to a particular type of uh, like whiskey i told you beer has got less uh, chances to develop injury but more whiskey is more so type of uh, beverages one is taken duration severity and amount so uh, if the cause is removed there are chances that you can uh, uh, you can handle the patient manage the patient and the patient can be made stable so esophageal varices once they develop they remain stable they increase, they can increase in size if the liver disease worsen but it can also decrease if the liver disease improves so cause remove karenge to improve karega improve karega to but you cannot improve the, for example in hepatitis c virus you cannot remove the cause it is there it keeps on replicating so in hepatitis c virus so depending upon the cause if you know the cause behind the cirrhosis you can tell the patient that the patient the varices will recur or will improve or will not improve patient can be made stable or cannot be so uske liye blood arrange karna transfusion wagera rakhna to wo aap manage kar sakte hain diagnosis can be made by taking either it is a transudate or an exudate exudate yaad rakhe jisme protein content zyada hote hain they are usually the indicators of either the tuberculosis uh, tuberculosis societies or hepatocell or carcinomatous so carcinoma wagera mein protein content zyada hote hain otherwise the end result is there is pulmonary congestion so pulmonary congestion or pulmonary hypertension is also seen in all these cases of portal hypertension so moving on to as there's just 6 minutes left the last topic is the biliary cirrhosis it could be secondary biliary cirrhosis primary biliary cirrhosis or primary sclerosing cholangitis you can read it from the books but i just tell you one thing that secondary means uh, you just read it from the books i won't just to give you the summary of the whole liver now you know, because only 5 minutes are left the secondary biliary cirrhosis means cirrhosis Uh, which is not related to liver it's beyond the liver so common bile duct may stone ho carcinoma of pancreas ho carcinoma of bile duct ho cholangitis ho biliary atresia ho which is a congenital cystic fibrosis ho or uh, ascending cholangitis whatever the cause these are all the causes which are placed in the group that is secondary biliary cirrhosis primary means there is obviously uh, an autoimmune disease of the liver with the slow progressive destruction of the bile duct in uh, endothelial cell causing stasis to jab stasis hogi to obviously kya hoga pruritus hoga ya fti hoga so ye isme cholangitis primary ho secondary ho aur sclerosing ho teen tarah ki hai teeno mein hi what happens is there is cholestasis so cholestasis yani ki reflux ki wajah se bile is retained in the liver and when bile is retained in the liver it leads to that the condition is called cholestasis and when there is cholestasis bile salts they are reflected into secretion and those bile salts they can they lead to clinically symptoms to have opuritis so opuritis is the reflection of retention of bile salts in the circulation from where they are coming they are coming with the reflux back uh, the back flow from uh, liver into the systemic circulation so increase in the concentration of bile salts lead to opuritis complications uh, which can develop in cases of cholangitis whether it is secondary primary or it is uh, sclerosing the complications are the same cirrhosis hepatic failure and portal hypertension these are the three commonest or hai bhi yahi end stage hi hai ye cirrhosis se pehle so hepatic failure that is end stage liver disease 
or the patient develops support hypertension as esophageal paresis and bleeding, diathesis. So, this may be patient anemia. So, there's this the severity of illness you can easily diagnose is uh, by detecting, detecting anti mitochondrial antibodies and differential diagnosis is, or as it is an autoimmune. So, autoimmune hepatitis is the DD. But uh, sclerosing may or is me kya farak hai? Dono autoimmune hai, dono ki differential diagnosis, jo autoimmune hepatitis hai. Lekin, Sclerosing means sclerosing is lovers uh, is means scarring. Sclerosing means scarring. So jab scarring ho gita, lumen ko kya hoga? Lumen will keep on getting narrow, 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 and narrow. So what happens is it is not reversible. Fibrosis once develops, it leads to narrowing of the lumen. It does not reverse back at all. So bile ducts they become narrow until the bile back, uh, flows back into the liver and uh, uh, starts damaging it. So, in this and in the primary, the difference is that both are autoimmune, but in the usually in sclerosing cholangitis, you have to ask the family history and the other family members, you may find this uh, sclerosing cholangitis in other members. So, you can say, and uh, sometimes infections, they trigger the sclerosing cholangitis, whereas it is not the case with primary inflammatory. Uh, there is a close association of inflammatory bowel disease and uh, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease with sclerosing cholangitis. So there are both chances, or you can say that the cases of ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, and uh, this um, uh, inflammatory IBD, what you call inflammatory bowel, uh, bowel disease. So they are at a higher risk of having sclerosing uh, cholangitis. Similarly, viruses and uh, infections, they uh, uh, usually triggers this uh, cholangitis and pruritus and complication of that. So this is a little si autoimmune or primary cholangitis say us primary cholangitis bhi kehte hain as you can see in the previous slide and the second name is primary biliary cirrhosis so primary biliary cirrhosis ya primary cholangitis or sclerosing mein ye fark hai which i have already told you that ye wo cases hain which are high risk group usme wo aisi baat nahi hai number 1 number 2 hardening of the bile ducts is the hallmark or the more uh, feature of this uh, sclerosing uh, cholangitis as compared to versus if you compare it with the primary cholangitis. Otherwise, histological stages are the same. There is uh, uh, bile, uh, florid duct lesions initially and then proliferation, fibrosis and cirrhosis. So these are the same stages you uh, we, which we enumerated right in the start. Complication may differential diagnosis may work from uh, uh, this primary cholangitis and that is that was anti mitochondrial antibodies here there are 53 percent cases uh, it has been reported in the united states of america that that epidemiologically the it's the anti nuclear antibodies in 53 percent of cases was found to be positive whereas in primary cholangitis it was anti mitochondrial antibodies more diag depend, uh, diagnosis is more dependent uh, on uh, this pancreatocholangiography, or you call it uh, MRI, that is resonance imaging technology in the, from the radiology department. So if you refer the case to the radiology department, more help can be gained from that instead of a biochemical evaluation that is anti nuclear antibody, where in primary cholangitis it is the anti mitochondrial antibodies. So, I have enumerated the differences you can go through also in the books. Coming back, uh, I will request uh, the professor from uh, uh, summing up the whole system. आप याद रखने के लिए क्या-क्या चाहिए नंबर एक तो ये आपको पैटर्न का पता होना चाहिए कि ये ये कॉजेस हैं किस तरह ये पैथोजेनेसिस जो है इन्फ्लेमेशन से रीजेनरेशन से एक्यूमुलेशन से इन्फ्लेमेशन की तरफ जाती है नेक्रोसिस और रीजेनरेशन फाइब्रोसिस सिमिलरली द वेरी कॉमन कॉजेस आर जो भी है एक्यूट हेपेटाइटिस में देयर आर चांसेस ऑफ रीजेनरेशन वेयर एज इन क्रोनिक इट इज यूजुअली द सेकंड दैट इट डेवलप्स इनटू सिरोसिस पोर्टल हाइपरटेंशन और हेपेटिक फेलियर Causes of joint anatomy, you should have to 
फिर ये सिम्टम्स क्या क्या हो सकते हैं आपके साइंस क्या हो सकते हैं देन यू मस्ट नो दिजियोलॉजी हाउ जॉन्डिस वाई जॉन्डिस डिवेलप राइट फ्रॉम स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ रेड सेल्स टू द सिंथेसिस और यू कैन से द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ बिलोबीन एंड डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ बिलोबीन वेदर इट इज कॉन्जुगेटेड और अनकॉन्जुगेटेड देन Uh, you sh- i am just enumerating what you need to remember from this chapter flavor that is you need to know what are the causes of jaundice prehepatic hepatic post hepatic all those causes and then you must know the liver function tests and how do you differentiate the liver uh, uh, whether it is a prehepatic or hepatic or post hepatic more commonly the differences between hepatic and post hepatic prehepatic are very usually very clear in children with the well then you need to know the infectious hepatitis and what different types of viruses they are responsible for the infection of hepatitis uh, uh, hepatitis that is hepatitis a virus b virus then different types of b virus if you know the structure of b virus then only you can know the what antigens they are produce and what are the antibodies which are produced against the b virus and then the different clinical stages whether it is a carrier or different types of here you can see is that it is a persistent hepatitis or chronic active hepatitis fulminating or recovery or there is cirrhosis or all other diseases what is co infection what is super infection and what are the serological markers for hepatitis b virus what are the serological markers for d virus c virus and then you need to know study the chronic persistent hepatitis or chronic active hepatitis and uh, what are the causes of cholestasis and how does uh, what symptoms cholestasis does produce and how do you diagnose a case of cholestasis jaise ek misal main aapko de deta hu in post hepatic the cholestasis may be within the duct or outside the duct so management of a uh, biliary stone is different it is a surgical management as carcinoma is also a surgical management but uh, naturally you have to screen the things differently and you have to manage the thing differently then you need to study the autoimmune hepatitis drug induced hepatitis alcoholic hepatitis non alcoholic hepatitis deposition or accumulation of different things like fat iron copper wilson's disease and antitrypsin that is protein uh, trapping into the hepatocytes and then you need to know the chronic hepatitis and what is cirrhosis causes of cirrhosis clinical feature of cirrhosis and all that and morphology of cirrhosis diagnosis of cirrhosis diagnosis of uh, liver failure end stage liver disease hepatocellular invasion and then portal hypertension causes of portal hypertension and then how do you manage uh, that is the subject of medicine but diagnosis ke liye you need to know the uh, how to how do you take the sample for uh, for ascites uh, and then last is the cirrhosis that is three types of can be primary and called as sclerosis and the causes of that and the differences of uh, primary cholangitis from sclerosing cholangitis so this is all the summary you need to remember i have already given you the topics and then you study it from the books thank you so much for this aap sab aa jao ji main aaj class se la ke aaya hu maine paade le le ये काम खाली मिनट में करना है ये मिनट में